You're listening to Big World Network. Taking Care of Business, Episode 1, An Estelle Watkins Mystery, written by Tristy Pinkston, read by Wendy Herman. I hate chili. I hate it, hate it, hate it. No, you don't. Vera plunked herself down on a stool at the kitchen counter and fixed Estelle with a pointed look. You love the stuff. You'd eat it every day if it weren't for the flatulence problem it would cause. Excuse me? Estelle set down her chili-stirring spoon. I am a genteel southern lady. I do not experience flatulence. The farts, the fluffs, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to pretend this conversation never took place. Estelle turned to the fridge and pulled out some lettuce. A nice salad would go well with tonight's dinner. Maybe if she ignored Vera long enough, the subject would change to something more pleasant. How's Andrew? Ah, that was better. She could always talk about her son. He's great. He's treating his whole brush with the law like a grand adventure, something to add to his resume of amazing experiences. He's always had a knack for seeing the bright side of things. And that's a knack you could stand to develop. Estelle set the tomatoes on the counter next to the lettuce. You're such a sourpuss. I don't think you'd know what to do with me if I turned into a Pollyanna. You might need to have your horoscope checked for signs of Armageddon or something. I'm not sure Armageddon will show up in people's horoscopes. I think it will just happen. Whatever. Vera reached down the counter and helped herself to a cookie from the plate Estelle had put there an hour before. So what's got you all riled up about chili? At last they had looped back around to what Estelle really wanted to talk about. It's this chili cook-off. I don't know why Mabel put me in charge of it. She thought you were lying about why you couldn't come to the planning meeting, remember? Well, it's not my fault I was trying to get my son out of jail at the time. It's a perfectly legitimate excuse, even if it does sound fake. It would help if Mabel had any imagination at all. Vera contemplated the last bite of her cookie. She could stand a little adventure of her own. She could go hang out with Andrew. I wouldn't wish that woman on anyone, let alone my son. Estelle was particularly sensitive where that young man was concerned. She hadn't been able to conceive for several years after she and Sam were married, and she'd all but given up hope of being a mother when he finally announced his arrival by making her sick as a dog for nine miserable months. She never regretted all the time she spent praying to the porcelain god, however, and loved her son with a fierceness she bet couldn't be rivaled by a mother tiger. Seeing him behind bars the previous week had been almost more than she could take. I think Mabel trusts you, Vera said after a moment. She grabbed another cookie, but Estelle was so taken aback by what she'd just said, she couldn't find words to remind Vera that it was almost dinner time, and she might ruin her appetite. She wouldn't turn this event over to just anyone. It would make the ladies' aid look bad if this was a flop and Mabel can't stand for the aid to receive any negative publicity whatsoever. I guess you're right. Estelle gave the chili another quick stir. It sure feels like a punishment, though. Speaking of punishments, may I ask why you're cooking up a pot of chili when you hate it so badly? Estelle blushed a little. It's my ego, she admitted. I was talking with some of the other ladies today, and they were bragging about their recipes and how they are sure to win the cook-off. I just happened to have all the makings here in the kitchen, and I happened to have some beans soaking. Because who doesn't happen to have two pounds of pinto beans soaking in their kitchen at all times? So I figured I'd make some, and Sam loves my chili, even more than I do. And the two of you can fluff together. Isn't that romantic? Oh, hush. A rumble alerted Estelle that the garage door was being raised. She glanced at the clock. Sam was half an hour early. That was so unlike him, especially during tax season. Jackson Hewitt never let their employees off before five. At least this branch didn't. And Sam was the type who would stay late to finish up some paperwork, even if he didn't get paid for it. He came in the kitchen door and pecked Estelle on the cheek in a very distracted way. 
then lowered himself to a chair at the kitchen table. "'You're not going to believe it,' he said. Estelle looked at her husband with sharp eyes. He looked old. Well, all right, he was old. They both were. It wouldn't be too much longer before he'd join the ranks of the retired and drive her nuts by following her around all day. She couldn't wait. But this oldness was new. She shook her head. Now she wasn't even making sense in her thoughts. What's the matter? she asked. We... we had a murder at the office. Oh, no! Estelle reached out and grabbed the counter. Were you framed for it? Vera, always ready to cut to the heart of the matter, verbalized to the very thing that had leaped into Estelle's mind. It's not like it was a totally odd question. Sam had been a suspect in a murder investigation just a short week ago. Of course he was innocent, but the police didn't know that for a while, and it had been a harrowing experience in the meantime. No, I wasn't implicated, Sam replied. Estelle nodded, letting out a huge gust of air. "'Who was killed, sweetheart?' "'Arthur Crenshaw.' "'Oh, no,' Estelle said again, this time taking a seat. Arthur and his wife Daphne had been good friends of the Watkins. They'd come over for dinner a few times, and Arthur even shared an office with Sam. "'Tell us what happened.' "'And eat a cookie,' Vera unceremoniously dumped the plate in front of him. "'You look like you could use a few calories.' "'Thanks, I could.' Estelle couldn't bear to wait while he chewed. She wanted answers, and fast. She poured him a glass of milk, trying to keep herself busy so she wouldn't grab him by the tie and squeeze the information out of him. Not that she'd actually hurt him. She was madly in love with her husband and didn't want a single thing to happen to him. But the, the desire to speed up the process was making her irrational. Sam finished his cookie and guzzled his milk, then wiped his mouth with a napkin. Why did it seem that every movement seemed to take three times longer than usual? Estelle counted to ten in her mind before speaking. So, what happened? When I got to work this morning, the whole building was cordoned off with that yellow police tape you see on TV, and there were officers everywhere. They took us all aside and questioned us. It seems Arthur had been found by the first employee in the building, the woman who waters the plants. "'So you've known about this all day and didn't tell me?' Estelle couldn't help but feel just a little bit hurt. After so many years of marriage, she expected to be the first to hear about all the things in her husband's life. Getting new clients, buying a new tie, being questioned about the murder of a co-worker. It wasn't written into the marriage vows, but it might as well be. "'We couldn't call out, sweetheart. They asked us to stay and answer questions until they had what they needed, and then they sent us home.' That's why I'm here early. Estelle supposed that made sense. So what else happened? Vera asked. Estelle had almost forgotten her friend was there. The plant lady, believe it or not, her name is Fern. I don't believe it, Vera said flatly. But go on. Fern arrived around 7.30. She comes in before everyone else so we don't have watering cans and stuff like that sloshing around when we have clients. Anyway, she came in and was doing her rounds, and stepped into Arthur's office to water his silver pothos. It's really a nice plant, with long tendrils. Estelle reached out and patted his knee. He was rattled, and she understood that, but her patience had reached its maximum levels. Was this how other people felt when she wandered off on tangents? Surely not. Sorry. Like I said, she went in to water the plant, and found Arthur dead on the office floor. He'd been shot. "'That's just awful!' "'Was he on your side of the office or on his?' Vera asked. "'On his own. Why? I just wondered if yours was messed up at all. I mean, if you'd have to replace any carpet or anything.' Her voice trailed off. "'I'm not being very tactful, am I?' "'About as tactful as you ever are,' Sam bit into another cookie, and Estelle contemplated the strange relationship between her husband and her best friend.' Sam tolerated Vera only because of her close bond with Estelle, and Vera tolerated Sam because she knew Estelle came as half of a set. If Sam and Vera were ever alone together on a deserted island, they'd either completely ignore each other until rescued, or they'd practice cannibalism and see you could eat the other first. "'Did they suspect anyone yet?' Estelle asked. 
They weren't ready to make any arrests when they sent us home, Sam replied after sipping his milk. But they've asked us all to stay in town. If they've asked you all to stay in town, how do you know you aren't implicated? Vera asked. Seems to me if you were totally in the clear, you could move about at will. Honestly, Vera, you sound as though you'd like me to get arrested. That's not it, she protested. It was hard for Estelle when you were arrested last time. I just want to make sure she doesn't have to go through that again. I wasn't arrested last time, Sam pointed out. I was a person of interest, but they never arrested me. Okay, okay, truce, you two. Estelle held up her hands. This is worse than the Jerry Springer show. You two aren't about to reveal that you're secretly brother and sister, or ex-spouses, or mutated from strip-teasing watermelons, or something like that, are you? Sorry, Sam mumbled. Me too, Vera said, crossing her arms and looking anything but contrite. We should be thinking of poor Daphne. Vera nodded, not convincingly. Sam rose from the table and kissed Estelle on the cheek. You're right, sweetheart. It's not the time for silly squabbles. He loosened his tie and undid the top button of his shirt. I've had a really bad day, and I think I need to go lie down for a few minutes. Of course, dear. Estelle watched his back as he went up the stairs, feeling a surge of love rush through her heart. She would never stop loving that man, even if he did sometimes struggle to get to the point. Big World Network.